Hi folks, Carl here again from the AAEC forum. Richo71 is the avatar. Another review for you now. Uh, vape mail today. Uh, Keith and Kirsty at vapegear.co.uk very kindly sent me on free for review. The UD IGO W7 rebuildable dripping atomizer. This is the box it comes in. I'll show you the box in a minute. This is the rebuildable dripping atomizer that they've sent me, which is the IGO W7. I'll, I'll show you a couple of totes on it. How I've got it and how to go. I'll talk through how I've got it set up. Yeah, I won't do a rebuild on it. Uh, I'll show you the build I've got in it. And then uh, I'll speak about the build I've got in it and how easy it was and, and what people what we need to do to get this kind of performance out of it. Vapor everywhere again. It's another fog machine, guys and girls. Now, oh, I must say, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Keith and Kirsty at vapegear.co.uk, uh, for sending me this out. Uh, I'm quite new to the reviews now, I'm, I'm in my infancy, so uh, it's very kind of him and Kirsty as well. Uh, this is available for £19.99 pence. now, Keith and Kirsty do uh, free postage out for over £20, so if you buy a drip tip or something like that, you'll get free postage. Uh, this is the box it comes in, it's a slide open cardboard type of box with a viewing window. In the box, on the box should I say, You've got a authenticity uh, QR label, which you can scratch the bottom off and check if it's an authentic UD product. Open the bottom. If you open the top, sorry, uh, you've got a, a pull tab that will enable you to pull out the the atty and a few little uh, features inside there telling you what it is. And tells you where the spare spot, spare part kit is and the manual and it's behind so if you open the back of it up you've got a manual and you've got a spares kit in that little hole in the spares kit there's a bit of wick and wire looks like eco wool uh, a spare positive and a spare negative screw and a couple of o-rings in there so and that's in there I never use the wick and wire that you get with these things anyway so we'll put that back I'll get a quick view of the manual first the manual is just telling you what the parts are and uh, just a basic setup guide and um, on what uh, the functions, uh, the appearance, got all the uh, it's got all the specs on here. Uh, it's got a mirrored polish treatment on the surface. It says in here very nice and shiny. Well, it is. Uh, two negative posts, dual coil style. So they they are actually saying it's a dual coil dripper, which it is. Yeah, uh, but you, you you can do single coils in these dual coils. It's just that you can't close can't have one air hole on it it's set up for dual coil so yeah nice guide there for basics so we'll pop that back in to the box box is very nice very nice box very nice presentation box so <clears throat> that's how it looks sitting on my copper black stingray in 18500 mode and it looks very smart very very smart 22mm dripping atomizer it does state 24 but it states 24 because of the airflow ring the airflow ring sticks out slightly from the actual inner diameter of the uh, rebuildable dripping atomizer 
So we'll take it off my stingray. We can have it take the drip tip off. And we'll screw it off. And that's it. And it's got a non-adjustable 510. It's all polished. All of it. All polished stainless. Now the stainless is a 304 food grade stainless steel. And it's it's quite an heavy bit of uh, it's quite an heavy for an, an RDA. It's quite heavy. It's 54 grams in weight. Uh, it does feel build quality is very very nice on it. So it's got juice in it. So it's leaking out a little bit, leaking out the top. So I'll take the top cap off first, which is you screw it off. that down that's the top cap threads fantastic the threads were brilliant on it excellent uh, nothing really to say about the top cap top cap's quite weighty it's got a lot uh, it's a solid bit of stainless steel next is you take the airflow ring off just uh, give it a wipe because you've been using it as you've seen, <coughs> excuse me, it's got a quite a nice design to the airflow ring. If you look at it from that way, it's not round, it's got flat points on it, and it curves. If you look at it from that way, it curves out here, so it curves that way. And these flat spots are. I assume for when you when you're adjusting your airflow, so you can you've got it's not perfectly round, so your fingers aren't slipping. It you, your fingers stay on them flat bits when you're adjusting the airflow. I've done a quick measurement of the air holes. The air holes are what we call an elongated air hole, and in length it's about five mil approximate, and about two mil in depth, and you've got two of them. So I'm sorry, it's not. It's just just in layman terms. Uh, the height overall is 30 millimeters. Uh, over the overall height when it's all together, that's not including the 510. I shall just check that now. I shall put it back together and I can check it. So make sure that the uh, what UD say is right. SpongeBob ruler. It's actually, it's actually 25 mil. I'll just measure it again. Yeah, 25 mil without, not including the 510. So it's 25 mil in height, 30 mil including the uh, 510 connection. So we'll take that top cap back off again. The airflow ring. Now the tank section <coughs> has got a single O-ring, which when the airflow ring is on uh, and the top cap is on, is quite nice. It's not, uh, it's not, it's a little bit slacker than I would like. I would like it to be a little bit more tighter than what it is, but uh, because the, the, the top cap, when you screw it on, it doesn't actually... Uh, hold the air flow adjustment in place it still allows even when it's screwed down it's you can still turn it um, but <clears throat> so I would like it a little bit tighter for me personally but it, it's still it's still not bad and then what we've got is like like I said before the tank and you've got your two air holes which are the same size as the uh, outer ring stainless steel again stick it on my mod so I can pull the off pull it off the deck now with the deck you just pull that all this section comes off now comes off the deck the deck sits inside this at the bottom here and it's just a case of a little uh, wiggle and it comes off it's uh, it is very it is very nice when it's on it's not it doesn't come off dead easy uh, it's double o-ringed 
there and as you can see it's dual coil but it uses vertical coils uh, the way that the deck is designed in the center post you have to do vertical coils really uh, because the the hole is high high up on the post the hole is quite uh, quite large I've used 28 gauge cancel here these two coils coming out at 0 0.74 ohms uh, 28 gauge cancel six wraps on each uh, marker coils and it comes out at 0 0.74 ohms that and there's cotton wicking in there the cotton wicking as you can see all I've done with I've just started pushing it in through the top bit a pair of tweezers and pull it from underneath and then cut a bit any excess off and then lie the rest in the deep juice wells this has got deep juice wells I'll pull the cotton out and I'll, I'll what I'll do is I'll put some cotton wick back in it again so I can show you so there's one piece that's how much cotton I've used very little another piece there so very very little just uh, tip the rest of that juice out juice in there I'll show you the dip in the wells then so the center post is your negative post it's got as you can see it's got quite a a big hole if you can see on my camera uh, you could fit some quite thick can't fall in there to be honest I've this is 28 gauge uh, you can fit some thicker than that in there no problem uh, the, the screws are stainless steel uh, like I say double o-ring now the negative posts which are the two screws either side there one there and one there they are screwed in directly to the deck the negative posts are the deck of the atomizer and the two juice wells that we just get a pointer are here and here just gauge the depth of them juice wells that's how deep it is so very large juice wells now I'll get some cotton to you. All I use is organic cotton wool balls and I just rip a slither off even that is way too much break that in half again and I just start rolling it rolling it rolling it just till you get a nice piece to uh, go through your coils and then I just push it through the coil I know you can't see this very well but push it through the coil <coughs> grab the tail underneath trying to grab the tail from underneath it's the only uh, little awkward part about it and then I've grabbed the tail now and then it's just a case of pulling your cotton wick through if it gets a bit taut just keep turning it again because you don't want this cotton wicking uh, to be uh, too tight in there you want it to slide nice it now what you do is with your scissors what I've been doing is the one that uh, is at the top is I cut it off level with the post
like like that over the post that pull a bit more through and then cut this off a bit show you there and then what I do here is I shove this in the deep juice well like that shove that in the deep juice well there <coughs> excuse me so this cloud chasing then I just fluff that out not blocking the coil so that's the top of your coil there where the uh, it's cut off flush with the post then do obviously do the same with the other one uh, just roll it again Bother me. Way too much cotton there. Just cut a bit off to make it workable. And then do the same again. I do sort of like a twist and pull. Twist it in first. Just have to go off camera as well, I grab it from underneath. Then you grabbed it, pulled it from underneath. If it gets a bit taut, but you want some more length, just give it a, a pinch and a roll. Then cut this top section off level with the post again. Like that. Cut a bit of this access off, you don't need all that. And then you can shove the rest of this in that juice well. Like so. And that's it. That's how it's coiled and cottoned up. So it, it's a bit uh, doing vertical coils, putting the coils in, a uh, little bit more tricky and finicky than uh, doing it normal, normal horizontal coils and grabbing the end of the cotton because you're uh, pulling it down through there, you're not grabbing it out the side. But it, it's no, it's, it's not that much more difficult, should I say? But it is a little bit more, bit more finicky. Uh, so what we'll do now is what I do normally is I, uh, before I put it back together, is I just put a bit of juice, drip some juice into the onto the cotton wicking, just get it started. Fill up them juice wells a little bit. the first section on back on again line your coils up with the with the holes you can see down inside it anyway as you're doing it if you if your air holes are in line with your coils push it down so yeah I mean you can see through the air holes where your coils are as well if you're in line and stuff the coils are there and you can loop from the top as well so there's the air hole, there's the coil, same on the other side. <coughs> Put your airflow ring on, your top cap, and away you go. Onto your mod of choice, drip tip. <coughs> so you have to excuse me guys I've got a bit of a cough coming and I'm still vaping this stuff cloud chasing if you want to if you want to call it and there it is in all its glory now I'll drop a few more drops in there now 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will take a lot of juice. This will take probably 30 drops in there. Uh, I put, like I say, I've juiced it up, filled the juice wells up a little bit, and I've just put 10 drops in. There's nothing coming out the air holes. That's with the holes wide open, and it's a <coughs> direct lung hit that. Very day, the flavour is very good on it. Just a couple of seconds hit. Produces stacks of vapour. It produces as much flavour and vapour as the TOBH that I recently reviewed. <clears throat> but all in all, thoughts. Uh, just one negative, not negative. Yeah, it is a little bit of a negative. Is that the the airflow ring is not really that tight at all. It needs to be tighter, and there's a little bit of up and down play in it can you see the that in the top cap is screwed down as far as it'll go so and there is a little bit of play in that would have been nice if the top cap skewed the o-ring in place uh, similar to another rda can't remember which one it was anyway but that's just a slight negative apart from that uh, I mean, it has loosened up over time. When you get when it gets when the O rings get a bit juicy on on there as well with using it, it does get even slacker than what it is when you've cleaned it. But it doesn't really move as such. It's just got that bit of play. You can hear it now. So just a just a probably a little bit of a design flaw there. But. doesn't affect the performance at all in any way so yeah apart from that one negative uh, a great dripping atomizer uh, 1999 uh, on par with anything that's out at the moment for sub ohming and uh, for you know making the clouds that people want to make I don't really necessarily do this kind of thing all the time uh, but it has got good flavor Good, good flavour. Uh, you close them air holes off a bit and take a normal. Mouth to lung hit and it's it's really nice. Yeah, really nice. So, yeah. Thank you Keith and Kirsty for sending me this on for review. I hope uh, everyone's got what they wanted from the video with regards to seeing the uh, the RDA in action. Um, sorry about my camera angles with regards to uh, the coiling and stuff, the, the putting the cotton in the coils and stuff like that. Uh, if I get a, when I get when I get a better camera, I can do the coils on video and I can show them your close up better. Uh, but thank you again. Uh, Keith and Kirsty, great uh, that you sent me this on uh, for review and hope people will get what they need to get from it out of the video um, 1999 it is up on the site in stock there's quite a few in stock and I would just like to close it up there thank you guys and girls for uh, watching and I'll see you in my next review thank you